Hello, Froggy here, and today we'll be taking a look at the Expunge mission areas. These take place in the Distributed Cognition Domain, although they occasionally mask that name. So where will we be bridging? You are bridging the space between reality and possibility, where matter meets will and bends in a prism of light. A reality where none but the Vex have ever been. But what you see here is made manifest by your mind, turning Vex consciousness to something tangible. This is no mere simulation. Death in this domain is as real for the Vex as it is for you. Well then. Anyways, if you haven't guessed, there will be some spoilers for the expunged missions here. Perhaps all of them. So, you have been warned. Although, first we're just going to take a look at the outside of this room. So we are pretty much at the hole here. At this point we're just going to dip underneath this and jump back up. And welcome to the outside of the map. It's amazing how that space felt so large, and yet, from the outside, you can see that it's rather confined and small. It really is a uh, impressive feat. Always feels like there could be secrets right around the corner. So we're climbing up here because there is a rather nice view we get of the other areas once we go all the way up. But also because this area just looks really cool. You can kind of see it faded in the background, but once you get to a uh, certain height it looks a lot clearer. Also, there are death zones everywhere. This place is locked down pretty tight. I tried reaching the other bubbles from here, any of a number of directions, but no luck. As is often the case when you don't have access to sparrows, you'll probably be wanting stasis because it lets you climb wherever you want. Just a few more grenades. Might be able to jump up on the other side, but I've got this really nice hammer and this wall's looking an uh, awful lot like a nail. Oh, one more. Silly top lip. And here we have it. A pretty nice view of three distinct bubbles. Although there is a fourth, but we'll get to that a little later. It's a nice little game. Maybe boss arena type thing? Middle one's the one we're teleporting to. On the left is another similarly long path. Well, let's get a move on. We're just going to continue along the way. If you've got the upgrade for the shortcut, you can go ahead and take that one as well. I really just wanted to show the outside of the green room because it is rather satisfying to go through and what? see what this no. is you traversed. Guardian, the Vex have sensed your presence in the network and are attempting a purge. You must hurry into the domain. Welcome to the Purge. I really do enjoy the, uh, the ambiance of this whole, uh, area. And all the colors. Very Tron. Looks like we'll be revisiting that for each of them, but it's enjoyable enough that I won't mind. Plus there's the skip. Anyways, once we've gotten into the bubble itself, 
you'll find that there's actually nothing stopping you from leaving and going to any of the other ones. After all of the death barriers they wrapped the previous area into, this one is wide open. I am not sure what to think about that, but, you know, I'll take it. So this uh, little room isn't uh, very large, so I'm not sure what's going to happen here. Seems like some sort of like boss-like encounter. Let's see, this is the tube we come into. And nice round arena. Little boosty things on this side. Yeah, I imagine there's got to be more to this one here, unless it's a rather long uh, encounter there, especially considering what uh, this week's was like. Step over there is just helping me keep myself oriented. He's back on the top of the green room. Well, we might as well go say hi. We weren't quite able to get a good view from the uh, outside from afar. So, moving between these bubbles takes a lot of sword flying, and you're going to want to stretch out your ammo as much as you can. I definitely recommend using your stasis melee as it comes up, as well as your stasis super. This is quite a nice view. Anyways, Bungie made a recent change where you get your melee back at the end of the super, so don't forget about that one. Oh, those lighting changes are nice too. We'll be heading to that bubble next, but probably easier to do that from inside of the first one. See ya, Step. Anyways, we've got another long flight on our hand. Each one of these is getting a little bit longer. However, with the magic of editing, I can make them a little bit faster. Definitely makes for some good sword flying practice. And we're almost there. This one's pretty interesting. It's got kind of a T-shape to it, so I guess we'll have to be doubling back for something or other. Interestingly, I don't see a starting tube, so maybe this one connects to the previous one. Not sure. Some of the uh, override things teleport you during a uh, different encounter, so maybe this will do something like that. Yeah, I'm just loving these rooms. You can kind of make out where some of the unlocks that make things easier will uh, come in with the green dots on the ground. That's some sort of central round chamber here. And sure there'll be something to activate for those boost pads. I'm not sure what the hoops are about. But they are nice looking. Might as well jump through them. Had to jump through enough hoops on the sword flight over. And it looks like there could be like anything hidden away in these uh, cubbies up here. Let's take a... Uh, well, if I can throw a 
Stasis crystal flat. Uh, what secrets do you have? A uh, secret turn back. Yay! I just want to like, go through that little hole. Oh well. We'll go through this big hole instead. Let's see what the other side of this looks like. Really seems like the floor ought to be lava here, but is not currently. Perhaps in the future. And this is a bit ominous looking. Quite a wide area. Although maybe this will be where you come in. I don't know. Hard to tell without the tube. Like these little moving platforms. You just kind of knock them around. Yeah, this is a uh, another kind of roundish open area. I wonder if that's going to be a part two to that boss arena. And... Oh, death barrier. How about that? Guess we can't get out that way. So, there is... a fourth bubble. I don't plan to do the full run through this one, since that is the mission that I have been running over and over again to enjoy the uh, interesting paths it takes you on, but uh, the next one's actually a bit higher up, so we need to climb the side here first. I'm just going to use that boost to get a bit of initial height. And then climb up the side here. We're just going to be stasis climbing a little bit higher. The thing about the next area is it is mostly wrapped in turnbacks and death barriers, but if we come in above the ceiling, we can actually land on the pillars around the outside. As a heads up, most of these pillars have some weird sort of invisible pillar above them that stasis doesn't stick to, so you're going to want to probably avoid flying directly over pillars unless you've seen that they don't have that weird obstruction. This is definitely the longest of the flights, especially since we needed to start from so far back to get enough height. Can probably get away with a little bit closer, but we have all of these handy ways to stretch out our distance, so we might as well use them. Plus, if we come in too low, at uh, best we'll have to stasis climb for a bit, and at worst we'll just hit one of the turnbacks or death barriers that surround the final area. It did take me a couple tries to figure out all the height and distance requirements for this one, so don't feel too bad if it takes a few tries. If you come in a little bit too low here, get ready to throw your stasis crystal and start climbing the side. And we've made it. We've got a nice overview of this area now. Kind of interesting looking. We've got the tube over on that side. So definitely an area you start in. And taking a look at uh, the path here. So no, this is the one that was giving Cloud some trouble. And 
and yesterday I, uh, failed to get it myself, but it is a new day. You can probably also stasis climb up all of these pillars up here, since it doesn't look like there's anything to stop us, but that'll be an adventure for another time. So, Gerb Snail tried the tube over there, and as I was hoping, there are in fact areas that you can drop from above. So let's head on over there and take a look at what we've got in this last one. I don't know if you have to get in the tube itself, but, you know, why not? Oh, it does give you the nice little, like, uh, effects as you go down. Oh, we can already see there's some, uh, those green dotty platforms for the easy mode. Oh, well, that one skedaddled. Glad the, the physics didn't take me with it. More platforms. And a boost pad to boost pad thing. I wonder if that's another thing you unlock. Or if it'll actually turn on in the uh, mission version. I'm guessing this is the last of them, but I haven't uh, looked at anything to see what order they'll be coming in. More of the green pads there. This one does have all of these red boxy things, which the others did not, so... It kind of sets itself apart there. I wonder what this one will be like. Originally in this season, when I saw that all of the various overrides looked the same, I was worried that it would end up being a bit too samey, but after seeing how uh, they used the boss arena differently each time, I am no longer concerned. Well, this is kind of roomy and a bit of a uh, abrupt end. I wonder what this is... Uh, going to be. Kind of cinematic. Well, time will tell. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed exploring this area, and hopefully you'll take a look for yourself. Until next time, happy exploring!